Hey there, good morning. How you doing? There you are. Not you, Jazz. The dog running in. I get excited. She gets excited. Yeah. How you doing? It's uh, the 23rd of July, 2019. So it's uh, Tuesday's newspaper review, super chat, chat, whatever you want to call it, here on YouTube. And today I'm wearing the GIMP t-shirt I should have worn yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Justice for the GIMP. There isn't any news on the whereabouts of the GIMP or um, how the GIMP is doing. And um, we might just forget all about the GIMP. Well, my, my mate Tez made that for me. And uh, it's a little prelude of things to come when we have a little shop, a little store on richieallen.co.uk. Hi to Kim Marie Herborg. Herborg, how you doing, Kim? When is uh, Salente coming back on, says Kim. He was only on the programme, Gerald, about two weeks ago. So um, probably in three or four weeks' time, I'll drop him a line again. I'd have him on all the time, Gerald, but he's a busy man. And um, I like to get him on every six or so weeks. With his permission, great guy, Gerald. Hi to Anonymous in Western Massachusetts. Thanks so much for the Super Chat donation, my friend. I really appreciate that. Makes my day, made my morning that. Thank you very much. Hi to Terry Hayes, to Misty Ernst, to Joe Public. Joe gives us a weather briefing from Edinburgh every morning. Too right, Joe. 18 degrees in Edinburgh. Oh, 18 degrees. It's already 22, 23 degrees here, and it's only 9.32. And it's going to reach about 30 later on today. It's going to be a stinker today. Hi to Sean Mack. To S. Buxta. Steve O'Neill in Portsmouth, where it's 28 right now. Oh, yeah. 2 6. Trevor the Mule, sweating like a goat in a bin liner. It's a great way of getting rid of any L virus that you have, by the way. Whenever I've had a bit of a chest infection or a heavy dose of a cold, I've um, used the old bin liner trick. Get a bin liner, put it on your body. Put your um, put a t-shirt over it then and a pair of tracksuit bottoms. Get into bed. Have one of the worst nights you'll ever have because you won't sleep really. But you'll sweat it out of you. Hi to Una Munro who's in Falkirk where it's grey and cloudy. How you doing Una? I think Scotland might be the place to be today I think. Scotland is the place to be all the time Richie. Freedom! Yes, absolutely right. We love our cousins. Our Gaelic cousins. The Scots. I did J1XX3R. Did I mention Danny? Danny's in the southwest of France. Good morning to Truth Sight, to Gaza, to John Sheridan, to Letra Blaze, Lawrence King, Paul Alawi, Mark Simich, your infinite way. Uh, thanks for calling me gorgeous, by the way. That's made my day. I to Roxanne Cattell, who retracted her message. Put it back, Roxanne. I double dare you. Go on. Hi to Mr. Dry Reach, Ian Robert, no, Ian Robert Houghton, and KT, and uh, Roxanne is in Australia. How are you doing, Roxanne? Where it's in the evening there. Threta Glumberg, Andy New, Chris Morell, who's got Tourette, so I've had to unhide that, but I've just unhidden it. Kinnell, and to uh, Mo Lester. Yeah. Let's just jump straight on in there, eh? So my, my little holding image there on this, the crappiest of all crap live streams in the history of crappy live streams is um, the rotund, rugged, I don't know, I don't know, hefty, Boris Johnson, he's certainly no lefty, entering number 10 Downing Street. A lot of the papers are using this image this morning. It isn't a new image. This was taken weeks or months ago. Around about 11.45 this morning, it will be announced that Boris Johnson has won the Conservative Party leadership contest and thus he becomes the uh, latest United Kingdom Prime Minister. Don't ask me what number he is. One of you anoraks there on the super chat, on the chat, go and find out which number Prime Minister he will be. They've got 46 presidents in America, right? Is it? Was Trump 46, was he? Was he 46, Trump, or 47? 46, I think. I don't know how many prime ministers we've had in this country. 
and I don't give an arse. But certain people like to know these things and they like to have this sort of kind of, anal, I, I would say, anal information. But barring some weird miracle, it will be uh, Johnson and it won't be Jeremy Hunt. Now, a lot of the newspapers in the UK today are running with the story of Carl Beach, who was known to the Met Police as Nick. Now, he was found guilty yesterday of making false claims to the police. He was found guilty of other charges as well, umpteen, umpteen counts of making false allegations, making up VIP child sex allegations. This is a hugely interesting story to anybody who's been following the allegations, not made by him specifically, but by many, many men and women in recent years when Savile was unmasked, sadly, of course, posthumously, when he was unmasked posthumously for the egregious crimes that Jimmy that he committed against um, boys and girls and people in hospitals and all the rest of it. So hugely interesting in this. And there's a lot in the press today about it. And I'll talk to you very briefly about it in a few minutes. I'll give you my tuppence worth for what it's worth. So that's the um, Metro. And you see a uh, little girl with sunglasses scorch you today across the UK. Not just today, today, tomorrow and Thursday. It's going to be pretty stink. And um, that's okay. We'll live with it. We'll get on with it. Excuse me. Daily Express. Fantasist who made a mockery of justice. Police blasted over £2 million inquiry into VIP sex abuse lies. There's Rod Stewart looking well there on a boat somewhere, I think. Old Rod. Doesn't he wear it well? Love Rod. Not seen Rod live. He's been to the arena twice in the last three and a half years. And circumstances put paid to uh, my chances of seeing him. I love the old legends, you know. <clears throat> and the sun. Again, you can see. Very interesting that the all the newspapers are going with this. And they're going with it big. It's almost as if the press is combining to tell you and to tell me. There's no such thing as VIP paedophile rings. Mm, 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 mm. It's not true. It's all fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. Right? Read that line there. But cops and Watson dodge rap. There have been calls for Tom Watson to be investigated by the police. This is the deputy leader of the Labour Party. Currently a bit of a thorn in the side of Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party. Some of Corbyn's supporters, I think, are delighted that Watson is coming out in the wash with respect to this story. Because Watson was one of those who championed Carl Beach, or Nick, as he was known to the police. And Watson was dubbed the pedo finder general. A few years ago when he was claiming Watson himself that Westminster paedophile rings were real and had to be unearthed and dealt with. So there's one or two little calls in the papers today for Tom Watson, the Labour deputy leader, to get some of the treatment that uh, Carl Beach has gotten. Very interesting that. Again, I might have one or two things to say in a minute. The Telegraph. Fantasist whose lies should never have been believed. And the Telegraph, of course, is delighted to put a picture of Tom Watson alongside the uh, alleged fantasist Carl Beach. That's the Daily Telegraph today. And all the papers as well are talking about the heat wave. Sure, you'd swear we never had any sunshine in the UK. It's not like as if we didn't have a heat wave last year, you know. Last year we had a real heat wave. It lasted for weeks. Um, we roasted, so we did. It was um, horrible last year. For me anyway. Especially doing the radio show in the late afternoon. In a magnificent studio with every mod con that any BBC studio has. I've put pictures of my studio online. You've seen it. It's amazing. The only thing I don't have 
fucking air con. That's going to be expensive. Excuse me. Susan Dunn is in Mees. How you doing, Susan? Watching what it? Don't have any air con. I will try and do something. It's very expensive domestically to do what needs to be done. I've had it looked at. And it's only for two months anyway, isn't it? Well, we'll see. Perversion of justice, says the Daily Mail. Again, the same thing. The Mail also leads with Boris Johnson. Overwhelming favourite to be announced as the leader of the Conservative Party and the Prime Minister, of course. He would take up his Prime Ministerial duties tomorrow, would Johnson. Apparently, Theresa May had a farewell party at Downing Street last night. Hmm. D-Day for Boris. Can he emulate his hero Churchill and turn Brexit into his final hour? Of course not. Don't bank on it, people. What's on the front page of the Times? Watson has to apologise, say victims of abuse lies. Yeah, so the Times, wasting no time, Rupert Murdoch's Times, at having a dig at, at Tom Watson. Okay, who again was one of the chief... Um, what would you, how would you call him? I suppose, yeah, the word champion was probably a good way of describing him. A big champion of um, Carl Beach. Now, I don't know that Carl Beach was telling lies. I don't know that he wasn't telling lies. But I talked a lot about this some years ago, about how the establishment would fight back against these um, revelations about paedophile gangs the highest levels of power. I said what they would do, and I did say this, and it's on the record, is that they would put um, decoys out there. You might remember when some of the cast of Coronation Street were arrested on very dubious claims. People like William Roach and Michael Lavelle who've been in Coronation Street for years. And I was thinking at the time, when those cases were very quickly proven to be nonsense, Paul Cambaccini, at the BBC I thought somebody is accusing innocent famous people of abusing children so that they can claim the whole thing is a fantasy right I did say that I didn't make me a genius other people had the same had the same conclusion as me Um, and that's Joe Swinson there in the red jumper She's the new leader of the Liberal Democrat Party. Bollocks to Brexit and all that. That's what they say. Joe Swinson there. Okay. Eye paper. Johnson 24 hours from Downing Street because he was only 24 hours from Downing Street. There you are. That's according to the eye paper. I will never miss an opportunity to treat you to my wonderful vocal talents. And that was an open goal that, you know. Gene Pitney, wasn't it? Gene Pitney. 24 hours from Tulsa. Justice. For the gimp. Now. Yeah. 11.45 this morning. We'll be told. Daily Mirror. Three past PMs. Blast new PM. The headline writer, the pun writer for the Mirror, must be absolutely fucking knackered in the heat. Couldn't give a shit, Pessy. <laughs> ah, oh, just gave up. Three past PMs, blast new PM. You'll have to do that. Laugh to do you. Major Blair and Brown have been having a pop at Boris Johnson. War criminals. Well, two of them anyway. Blair and Brown having a go at Johnson. I know. I know, it's a brave new world. What's in the Guardian? I know, I, I keep my voice down. I, you see, I'm going to have headphones on. Cans, as we say in the trade, dear children. When I have my cans on doing the radio show, I'm aware that I can be a bit loud and I tone it down a little bit. Or sometimes I turn it up a bit deliberately. The Guardian! Tory rebels warn Johnson, ditch no dealer, faith fight for survival. Yeah... Carl Beach convicted over VIP abuse, lies, and Joe Swinson. That is your guardian today. The Financial Times. 
Lovely. Hunt urges Europe allies to band together to protect Gulf shipping. This is the ongoing ratcheting up of tension between the West and Iran. Yeah, I don't have to say too much about that. You know what's going on there. Excuse me. That's why you choose this. You you, you click on this every morning for me to burp in your face. Yeah. Wide awake, wide, wide awake radio says his living room window shattered with the Tulsa pitch. That's the talent that I have within me. I've hit a, I've hit a couple of high seas in my time. Yeah, the Bering Sea and the uh, the Indian Ocean. Right, lovely. Financial Times. Let's move on. What about the star? Whatever happened to the Chihuahua that was um, dognapped by the seagull? <laughs> they think, they think that's the seagull right there, the prime suspect. We unmask the dognabbing gull, as expert warns, baby could be next. Look at that psychopathic bastard, look. Why doesn't somebody just get a slingshot? They reckon that's the seagull that might have stolen the chihuahua. Talked about this yesterday. No no, no point in going, going over it again. Be very unusual if the seagull did swoop down. For a chihuahua. Just saying a baby might be next. We had a couple of incidences last year where foxes bit babies, didn't we? Foxes... Of course, as time goes on, and their own habitat foxes are being tampered with, and they have less places to go and build their their homes. What do you call that place where a fox? Foxes don't live in dens. Badgers live in dens. What does a fox live in? A rabbit lives in a warren. Fox lives in a den. I live in Salford. Where does a fox live? Is it a den? So Fox is getting more and more brave. You see them all the time now, everywhere. I mean, I'm up at the crack of dawn running, right? So I see them all over the place. They're lovely foxes. I think they're gorgeous, lovely animals. Why you'd want to hunt them with a pack of dogs, chase them down, terrorise them and rip them to pieces is anybody's guess. Well, these are the people. I'm not going to say it. Right, so those are the front pages then. 24 hours from Tulsa! Marvellous. Okay. Told you before, don't play me. You've got a volume. All you got to do is that, right? Marvellous. If you don't swear on the, on the chat, your messages won't be hidden. Steve O'Neill said that uh, Steve used bin liners himself to lose a bit of weight when he was boxing. Yeah, that's common, Steve. It makes you perspire very heavily, doesn't it? And um, you'd lose a few pounds that way. A lot of boxers, when they don't make the weight, not obviously not heavyweights, obviously not heavyweights, but uh, welterweights, featherweights, lightweights, when they're a few ounces off the weight, over the weight, they do a bit of skipping, don't they? Sometimes they will put a bin liner on. Indeed. Hi to Rocky in Ross Common. How you doing, Rocky? I won't say a thing about the game on Sunday. I watched it. Dublin are too good, man. Dublin are too bloody good. It's a golden era, said the Irish Times this morning for Gaelic football. It is, but Dublin are head and shoulders above everybody else. Don't mention Waterford Hurling at the moment. Christ, we had a brilliant 15 years downhill at the moment. Downhill. David Stevenson, David Stevenson says, you may take my freedom, but you'll never take my telly. Get in there. Hi to Helena Matz. How you doing, Helena? Helena is in Norway. How you doing, Helena? Lovely to hear from you. Enjoys the program and um, laughs at this. Um, the black dog keeps away when there is laughter. I know exactly what you mean. Melancholy. That's the way to defeat Laughter. Depression and feeling bad. Excuse me, that's the way to defeat the blues. Laughter. Thanks, Helena. Lovely to hear from you. And thanks for the kind words. 
Hi to Charlotte. And uh, Wide Awake Radio enjoyed listening to Jason Bormas yesterday. Thanks, mate. Jason Bormas, is, uh, Bormas even was brilliant. Great having him on. Marvellous. Lawrence King. Bruce Blunt. How you doing, Bruce? And Bruce is in Almeria. How you doing, Bruce? Practising his crap Spanish. It gets you far when you try, though. It does. Now, I lived in Spain for nearly nine years. And by the end of it, I had pidgin Spanish. I wouldn't dare address a Spanish person in English. And I'm, again, I'm not a virtue signaller here. I just wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dream of it. I was a guest in that country for eight and a half, nine years. And when I found Irish people and English people living there permanently, kind of not making an effort, not trying to integrate in any way, not getting on with the Spanish, not trying to learn a bit of the language, it annoyed me. Why did it annoy me? Because those same English and Irish people who were now living in Spain were the first one to com- ones to complain about migration and a lack of integration in the UK, the hypocritical bastards. And they wouldn't try. And the future Mrs. Allen is a polyglot. I did tell you that before, didn't I? You know what a polyglot is? You know what a polyglot is? It's actually somebody who speaks um, multiple languages. Caroline's fluent in a number of languages. Obviously French, uh, Spanish, uh, German, English obviously, a bit of Italian as well. Um, she's a bit of a genius. She was fluent in Spanish within 11 months of us arriving in Spain. Caroline. Amazing. Um, so yeah, it makes me laugh all these expats in Spain complaining about migration and lack of integration. They make no effort whatsoever to integrate in Spain. And I know this. I, I learned a bit pidgin Spanish. So uh, I said to my friend in Almeria, good for you, pal. Good for you. John and Sarah says, uh, get a mini freezer in there, stuff it with ice pops, jubblies and knobbly bobblies. <laughs> You lunatic, you. Coca Bell has aircon in her apartment, her house, because it um, heats as well as cools, of course. Of course, when you live in Spain, every apartment comes with a workable air conditioning unit. Thank God. Marvellous. Paul says, do you think, do you think Theresa May said, now take me to prison like Henry Hill did at the end of Goodfellas when her farewell party was over? No. Sadly not, mate. Hi to Kath. Hey, how are you doing, Kath? Sent me an email. Did you, Kath? I didn't get it. I'll check it out, though. It might have gone to uh, spam. Let me check that out. If you sent it through PayPal, I might not have got it. But leave it with me, Kath. I um, will uh, get back to you. That's uh, Scout's Honour. Uh, Kath is a friend of the programme. I know Kath uh, very well. Good morning to Sharon Gale. Hope you had a good holiday, Sharon. Hope you're well. Um, lovely. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's move on down, let's move on down. Nigel Stone, how you doing, Nigel? Right, I've got to do some papers. Mark Harrison, John James. Yes, uh, Coco Bell's right. The Badger lives in a set, not a den. I was wrong. And the Fox does live in a den. Good that we cleared that up. Wonderful. What else is going on today? What else is going on today? Well, Richard Little, John, he wants action taken against uh, the Labour deputy leader, Tom Watson. Because Watson was very much in the corner of the man known as Nick, who we know as Carl uh, Beach now. And this guy was convicted of perverting the course of justice by making false and malicious allegations against them. People in public and politicians. Carl Beach. The male, uh, Richard Littlejohn, says he smeared conservative politicians and other establishment figures as kiddie fiddlers and serial rapists, and he didn't have a single shred of hard evidence. What's uh, Littlejohn, the Daily Mail columnist, says that um, Watson was um, Beach's enabler and cheerleader, and he used the Evidence, the, well, the claims by Beach, not evidence, uh, in, a, in a seek and destroy mission to defame leading Tories, accusing them of disgusting crimes. That's uh, Little John. So he wants 
some sort of action taken against Tom Watson. A number of people have called on Watson to resign. What's interesting is, is that Richard Littlejohn singles out two people, uh, one of them uh, being uh, Lord McAlpine, who was a paedophile. There's no two ways about that. That's a fact. Okay? Whatever. But he also singles out Lord Bramall, who's uh, ex-head of the armed forces. Apparently there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever, none, to support claims made against Lord Bramall. And this speaks to what I have always believed. You know, the elite and those who would do unspeakable things, like trafficked children, to rape them, they're clever, these people. They're not stupid, however um, evil and however sick and twisted these people are. They're not stupid. They're not without the nous and the, the, the common sense to figure out how they can um, how they can limit their exposure. And one of the ways to do that is to accuse innocent people of things they didn't do. And then when you expose that the innocents were accused and their lives were turned upside down, you then use that by way of saying to everybody, look, sure, it's all lies and it's all fantasy. Sure, of course, there aren't paedophile rings. These are our politicians and our elected leaders. These are mostly flawed but decent people. Decent but flawed. We're all flawed politicians, you know. But they're not involved in these paedophile rings. And that's what they've done, I believe. And now they're coming after Watson. Um, we've got to watch that. There'll be a lot of people, of course, again, Jeremy Corbyn supporters would be delighted to see Watson in the crosshairs. But again, put aside your own personal feelings for Watson. Watson is vile. I mean, he is. Watson is using these spurious and unfounded claims of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party to um, progress his own career in the party. Watson has his eye on the party leadership. Of course he does. He's despicable. But um, hang him for the crimes that he's committed. Not for ones he didn't commit. I believe Tom Watson championed Nick Carl Beach because Watson believed him. Because Watson was party to, or not party to, he was privy to other information that convinced Watson that there has been Westminster groups and gangs of politicians, some very, 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 very high-ranking ones, who have raped children and passed children around, no doubt. And Watson maybe jumped the gun a bit, maybe jumped to the shark with Carl Beach, maybe. But I think Watson believed him. Was Watson using the claims of Carl Beach to try and bring down the Conservative Party? Maybe he was, I don't know. But maybe he believed him as well. So a lot of talk about this today, the conviction. But of course as well, you've got the, you've got one or two papers saying, well, what about Tom Watson? So we've got to watch that very carefully as well. There's more on that today uh, in the Daily Mail, which has gone big on it. Because now the Mail is not only calling for Watson to be brought to book and to answer questions, they're also going after Exaro News. Now I'll tell you something about Exaro News that I find very interesting. A number of independent media producers and content creators, like myself and others, were for years talking to people about paedophilia, going way back. When I was interviewing David Icke in the late 2000s about claims that he made about paedophile rings and child abuse. And many others were also. Alex was doing it on Infowars and others, other well-known content creators. Exaro News kind of came out of the blue, didn't it? And it's gone now. And those are the guys there, including Mark Watts there, the editor of Exaro News. Those are the guys behind it. And it came out of nowhere, Exaro News. And all of a sudden, it was interviewing alleged victims of VIP paedophile rings and Exaro News was all of a sudden a big thing. It came out of nowhere. Now, I have no proof, and this is just conjecture, 
This is just a thought. I have no proof of this. But I wonder, was Exaro News some sort of co-intel pro-organisation set up by those who want to protect their exposure to child abuse? You know, it made no sense to me. I got in touch with these guys very early on, not just me, but other independent media content creators, and they didn't want to come anywhere near us. Wouldn't come near us. Remember thinking, why? We've been talking about this stuff for years. I'm interested in your investigative journalism. Come on our programmes. Tell our listeners what you found. But it wouldn't come on. They would only do national media. And it's led me to believe that Exaro News wasn't what we thought it was. And I wonder about that. That's all I'm saying. So there's calls this morning for these guys to answer as well for the Carl Beach thing. He's come out fighting this guy, Mark Watts, the former editor of Exaro News, and he said that Carl Beach never got a fair trial because inexplicably the jury was informed of, of Carl Beach's conviction for downloading child indecent images of children uh, about nine or ten years ago. That's disgusting, obviously. Downloading indecent images of children is disgusting. But Watts says it's unprecedented for a jury hearing a case against the guy to be told of any prior convictions because you don't want to prejudice the jury against him. You want the jury to just judge that case on its merits alone, not on the knowledge that he downloaded indecent images of children. On that point, Mark Watts makes an excellent point. That's a very good question. Why the judge made that decision is anybody's guess. It's all very strange. The whole case of Carl Beach. If you want to know about paedophile rings, just look at the famous clip that has been played by me 500,000 times of Edward Heath's former chief whip, Tim Fortescue, who told the world in 1997 that... um, Abusing small children was basically a sport amongst MPs. And when the MPs were in trouble, they would ask the whips to bail them out of it. And they were bailed out of it because then they were compromised and the whips could get them to do whatever they wanted. There's no doubt that paedophile rings and child trafficking by some of the wealthiest and most powerful people in this country is happening. And it's common knowledge among, among senior police officers. And it's common knowledge among the intelligence agencies. There's no doubt about that. I have no doubt about it. What else have we got? Speaking of paedophiles. This is in the Times today. That's Ian Brady. Who along with Moira Hindley committed some unspeakable murders of children in, uh, in, in Manchester, in Greater Manchester, and buried the children on the moors. Um, filthy fucking bastards. And Brady, they use this picture of Brady today because some crematoriums are refusing to deal with the bodies of paedophiles. For You might say, oh, I don't blame them. Whatever's left... When the paedophile dies, his or her consciousness, energy, spirit, soul, whatever, leaves the body, is gone. There's nothing left of the monster except the the carcass, the shell that they inhabited. And why wouldn't you just fucking do it? But it's causing a problem, apparently. Um, so the Scottish Inspector of Crematoria says managers have the right to turn away the remains of sex offenders, but has asked them to prepare for requests as death is a certainty yeah strange one that isn't it if I ran a crematorium and I, I can't think of anything more awful to be honest and if you do work in a funeral parlour and you're a listener to my radio show I'm not in any way looking down at you looking up at you looking sideways at you I couldn't I'm a bit squeamish like that I couldn't do that that's just me Um. Well, this is big. This is on the BBC today. 
Um, they're going to investigate a study that said it was okay for children to have puberty blockers. And this is important. Because there's only one youth gender clinic in the UK. And that clinic, as you know, lowered the age with which kids could have puberty blockers. Which is absolutely shocking, right? We know this, we talked about this. But they made their decision based on a study that the BBC says now um, might be discredited. Because the study ignored or brushed to one side some data that showed some children taking the puberty blockers reported an increase in suicidal thoughts and an urge to self-harm. They're giving children as young as 11 now puberty hormone blocking drugs basically. We talked a lot about this of course. This is lunacy. Isn't it? Lunacy. Let's leave that there. You had that story yesterday, didn't you, in Canada about the bloke who thinks he's a woman who wants his um, genitalia waxed and the women won't do it because they don't want to wax men and uh, all that madness. What else have we got? Bit of, bit of gender identity, bit of um, sexual politics, gender identity politics, identity politics in the papers today. A lot of good stuff in the mail today. Married lesbian couple's toddler daughter has refused enrolment a Texas Christian daycare because of their same-sex relationship. Um, I actually agree with the lesbian couple here. Not with their... I mean, I, I, I'd rather children were not brought up by same-sex parents. That's just me. But I agree with the um, parents expressing their annoyance. They might be gay, but their daughter isn't. Why won't you take our daughter? Just take our bloody daughter. We are gay! Our daughter is not. There you go. They've got four children. Must be a madhouse. Lovely. Going to get a lot of that. What else have we got? The attack on the sovereign integrity of Venezuela is relentless. We know that the governments of Europe and the United States say that they recognise a guy called Juan Guaido as their Guaido Guaido as the legitimate president of Venezuela. He's just a puppet of, of Zion and uh, Washington, of course, isn't he? Juan Guaido. Maduro is the legitimate president of Venezuela. Sanctions are not working. Trying to undermine the military. Trying to get the military to turn on on Nicolas Maduro is not working, so now they're attacking the national grid with electromagnetic attacks. This is what they do, you see. They do it all around the world. The United States of America. This is what they do. This is terror. You have Mike Pompeo, the uh, lying Secretary of State, talking about Iran, you know, committing terror around the world for 40 years. It's nonsense. Iran hasn't done any such thing. This is the United States. And it gets away with it. Because who's going to stand up to it? And Maduro is right. The inexplicable grid outages, which is affecting the entire country, is the work, undoubtedly, of the US and possibly the Israeli intelligence agencies. No doubt, in my mind. Shocking. And it's only RT, to their credit, that are covering the story. That's in RT today. Gotta love the French. I live with one, of course. By the way, I didn't mention it. Today is the 23rd of July 2017. I had my first date with the woman who would become the future Mrs. Allen exactly 17 years ago today in Waterford City on the 23rd. So 17 years ago today, we had our first date. So that's the anniversary then, I suppose, because we're not married. 17 years. 17 years. I know. What's the oldest cliche ever? If I'd have murdered her, I'd be out by now. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. The French, you gotta love the French. You gotta love the French. This is brilliant. 
French MPs call for a boycott of a dress by environmentalist apocalyptic guru Greta Thunberg. Or Thunberg. I think they say Thunberg. They don't pronounce the TH. It's a hard T. Thunberg. <laughs> Owen Jones is love child. Of course, that's not true. Owen Jones is, um, oh, I think Owen Jones is gay, isn't he? So she's unlikely to be his love child. About the right age, though. 16-year-old Swedish environmentalist Greta Thunberg set to address the French Parliament. Some of the MPs are saying, Sacre bleu! No. They're absolutely livid. An environmentalist group called Accelerons has invited her to come and speak before French lawmakers today, Tuesday. But some MPs from the Conservative Republicans and the National Rally Parties are properly pissed off. And they have said, we don't need apocalyptic gurus to fight climate change intelligently. We need scientific progress and political courage, said um, Guillaume I can't, Larive, is it? I can't read, it's too small. Uh, Guillaume Larive, yeah. Brilliant. Some of them have gone a bit further in their condemnation. Uh, and if you read French there, you'll see some of the tweets. One of them has called Thunberg the winner of the Nobel Fear Prize. <laughs> that was a Julien Aubert. And he said he wouldn't show up. He, I won't show up to applaud a prophetess in shorts. Good man. French don't like that, you see. Being dictated to by a 16-year-old schoolgirl. About climate change. I, I found that kind of funny today. What else do we have today? Donald Trump Jr. has got a book coming out called Triggered. The book leftist elites don't want you to read. It's obviously going to be ghost written. He's not going to write it, is he? And it's a book about how the left is trying to shut down people on the right. Yawn. Yawn. Identity politics. Yawn. It's called Triggered. And if you want to pre-order Donald's book... Well, you go right ahead and pre-order Donald's book. Crazy. Right, we're nearly done for today. It's coming up for quarter past ten. Uh, thanks for watching this. Marvellous. Uh, if I missed your comment, I didn't mean to. I'll just unhide Richard Willett's comment there. Because it was hidden. See, Google hides these comments all the time. If you put any sort of language in there, it hides them. Um, so there you go. Right. That's it for me. I'm going to love you and leave you. I've got plenty to do today. Former Detective Maggie Oliver is on the programme tonight. You don't want to miss that. We'll be talking about her brand new book. And um, I've nearly finished the book, actually. I'm going to get to finish it this afternoon. And Maggie will be on the programme. It's going to be a scorcher today. So um, drink plenty of water. Hydrate yourselves, children. And I'll be back with you at 5 o'clock on richieallen.co.uk and the usual platforms for the Richie Allen Radio Show. Thanks for bearing with me today. Until later on, have a good one. I will speak to you at five. Don't miss the Richie Allen Show. Maggie Oliver. Bye.